Welcome once again. Right now we're at Romans chapter 14. Judging your brother over what he eats and drinks. Paul writes, Now accept one who is weak in faith, but not for disputes over opinions. One man has faith to eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Now what Paul here is saying is that some people are carnivorous and other people are vegetarian, okay? You know, Christians are really bad for doing one thing, and that is taking one passage of Scripture, you know, cherry-picking Scriptures, and taking one thing and making it very, very literal, or making it like a universal, absolute truth. And here's an example. When Paul says one man has faith to eat all things, does that mean they ate computer mice? Does that mean they eat pens? Does that mean they eat books? I mean, Paul said, you know, one man has faith to eat all things. Does that mean, I mean, have you ever seen somebody eating their car or, or eating the chair they're sitting on? I mean, hey, I mean, you can't just take one little portion of scripture and, and isolate it from all common sense and for the, from the rest of the scripture and make it like a universally applied absolute truth. Now in context here, Paul means vegetarians versus people who eat meat, okay? That's the context here. Verse three, don't let him who eats, that is eats meat that is in context, despise him who doesn't eat. Don't let him who doesn't eat judge him who eats for God has accepted him. And also in context, not just scriptural context and not just you know common sense context, but in cultural context, here we have Paul, a Jewish rabbi who was taught by Gamaliel, one of the famous Jewish rabbis of history. And they're in a Jewish culture. They're not talking about eating pork. Okay, they're not talking about eating lobster here or bats or cats or anything else like that. Okay, because they're unclean. That's out of the question. They know that God doesn't want people to eat that stuff. Okay, so that's not even part of the equation. That's not even in Paul's mind at all. He's just talking about vegetarian versus non-vegetarian. Verse four, who are you who judge another servant? To his own Lord he stands or falls. Yes, he will be made to stand, for God has power to make him stand. Now, once again, you know, Christians might take this out of context and blow it out of proportion. You know, they say, who are you to judge? Who are you to judge another man's servant? I mean, if, if somebody wants to eat this or that or the other thing, then don't judge him because, you know, that's God's servant. So don't judge that servant. Don't be so quick to say that. We're going to read on. And I'm going to show you how Paul commands you to judge. Verse 5, one man esteems one day as more important. Another esteems every day alike. Let each man be fully assured in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord. For he gives God thanks. He who doesn't eat, to the Lord he doesn't eat, and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and none dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. Or if we die, we die to the Lord. If therefore we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, to this end again, Here's another good example of the word end, how people say, you know, Christ is the end of the law. It's talking about Christ as the goal of the law. I mean, if you obey the law, then you will be like Christ because Christ obeyed the law. For to this end or goal or purpose, Christ died, rose and lived again that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But you, why do you judge your brother? Or again, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, to me every knee will bow, every tongue will confess to God. And that's found in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23. So then, each one of us will give account of himself to God. Is Paul saying that we should not judge anybody? Well, I mean, it kind of sounds like that. 
But let's read on. We'll find something a little bit different. Verse 13, therefore, let's not judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block in his brother's way or an occasion for falling. If any verse of this chapter is the key verse, this is it. We are supposed to judge that no man put a stumbling block in his brother's way or an occasion for falling. So when Paul said up here, therefore let's not judge one another anymore, he meant let's not judge one another in you know whether or not they're a vegetarian. Don't judge them for being a vegetarian. But judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block in his brother's way or an occasion for falling. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean of itself except to him who considers anything to be unclean to him it is unclean. Yet if because of food your brother is grieved, you walk no longer in love. So if you're eating something or drinking something that other people consider to be sinful, you got to be concerned about that, that you don't cause another person to stumble or fall. Don't destroy with your food him for whom Christ died. Then don't let your good be slandered. For God's kingdom is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, as a, there's that word, righteousness, i.e., obeying God and obeying God's commands. Peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. In what things? Righteousness, peace, and joy. Makes sense, right? You do what's right in God's eyes. You do what's right according to what God says is right. You are acceptable to God and approved by men. So then, let's follow after things which make up for peace and things by which we may build one another up. Don't overthrow God's work for food's sake. All things indeed are clean. However, it is evil for that man who creates a stumbling block by eating. It is good not to eat meat, drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles, is offended, or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who doesn't judge himself in that which he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because it isn't of faith. And whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my good news or my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which has been kept secret through long ages, but now is revealed, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment, here's the commandment again, of the eternal God, is made known for obedience of faith to all nations, to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. As you seek God, if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.